I thought I would do a quick, hello, I thought I would do a quick example of an ionic and a covalent Lewis dot structure. So let's do potassium oxide, which I know would have potassium and oxygen in it. And of course I could find the formula for this because I know potassium is always plus one and oxygen is always minus two. So I would need two potassiums to have two positive charges to balance out my two negative charges. Or I could, of course, just use the crisscross rule. And I would know that formula is K2O. But actually drawing out the Lewis structures of the atoms, showing what happens, kind of helps visualize why that happens. So the Lewis dot structure for potassium is very easy. Since it's in column one, it has one valence electron. And oxygen has six valence electrons. So what I do is I draw a little circle around this just to say, hey, this dot's what's moving. And you can see that there's a unpaired electron, a half empty orbital, that would be a great spot for that potassium's valence electron to land. Now, unfortunately, that leaves me in a sticky spot because I don't have a pair for this electron and one unpaired electron is not a very stable state. I can't get another electron from this potassium because it's already lost all of its valence electrons. So what I need is another potassium, just like we saw in the formula. And that will fill into this spot right here. So when we draw Lewis diagrams for forming an ionic compound, we actually show those electrons moving from the metal to the nonmetal. And then my final product would have the potassium ion and a potassium ion, because I have two potassium ions that have formed from this. And of course, an oxide ion, which would have all eight of its valence electrons shown. And of course out here, we would have the two minus charge. So we would start with the elements, show how their electrons move, and then our final product would have ions. It would have a charge, and they would be held together by ionic bonding, plus minus charge attraction. Doing this for covalent molecules, we do not have charge on a neutral covalent molecule. So we're not moving an electron from one to the other, we're sharing an electron between them. So if I work with a covalent Lewis structure, I'm looking to make shared pairs of electrons between elements. So I'm going to do this formula here, which is for a molecule called formic, actually formaldehyde is the one I was going to do. It's formaldehyde. It's the stuff they used to use to preserve specimens for dissection, things like that. Formaldehyde has a pretty simple formula. It's COH2. Okay, so we put our least electronegative element in the center, and that has to be carbon. It can't be hydrogen, for one thing, because hydrogen only has one valence electron. So I'm going to put the C in the center, and I'm going to draw its four valence electrons. I'm going to put an O, and oxygen has six valence electrons. And then I've got two H's. So I'll have an H, draw one down here in a nice convenient spot. It has one valence electron. I have an H with its one valence electron. And actually looking at the way this is drawn, it would be a little bit more convenient to put this over here. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that instead. So once I have all of their Lewis dot diagrams for the particular elements, then I want to start making some bonds, some shared pairs. So you can see this two electrons could share up and be a pair. This two could share up and be a pair. And then I see this two could share up and be a pair. And then I start counting. Did I get to eight? This has one, two, three, four, five, and then a share of six and seven. So that's seven electrons right now, not eight. This has a share of two, that's good. 
This has a share of two, that's good. But my carbon has a share of two, four, six, seven again. So this is a situation where I would start looking to find a double bond, another place that I could share a pair of electrons. And knowing that was coming was what made me draw this precisely the way I did, because I can see there is one lone electron on the oxygen right here, and one lone electron on the carbon there that could easily be paired up. And so that's what I'll do. I'll pair these electrons up. You can see this gets kind of hard to read if we just do dots and circles. So we make our final molecule by representing these molecule, these shared pairs as a line. So I'd still have a C and an O and two H's. There's one shared pair between this carbon and hydrogen, so I draw one line. There's one shared pair between this carbon and this hydrogen, so I draw one line. There are two shared pairs here, so I draw two lines. What I can't forget to do, though, is to make sure and draw in those other four electrons on oxygen that were here in the Lewis structure before. These are called lone pairs because they belong to one atom alone. So these are lone pairs. And it's really important that all your lone pairs and all your bonding pairs are represented in a correct Lewis dot diagram. And we wouldn't be super picky about the angle that things are drawn. I know from experience that this is pretty close to the correct angle. But you'll, have, you'll learn that in time.